Hey, how's it, guys? So, uh, uh, today we're gonna touch on uh, on a baby squid bait or or a base squid. Same, I tie it the same way. This is actually a base squid. Um, very heartbroken to use it now, but uh, yeah, if you can get your hands on these, it's absolutely gems. This is a good size one. Um, yeah, so. There's a, there's a specific way of how you tie this and it's how you present the bait that uh, generally gets you a bite. Um, you also want to keep it nice and straight and you want to make the squid look as real as possible. So that's how we're going to make this bait. And with this bait, um, you target flatfish, you can target brown skates. They love it. It's actually candy for brown skates. And I, I target a lot of edibles with it. I catch stumpies with it, I catch pompano with it. Uh, and a whole, uh, whole load of other fish. Obviously, I wouldn't throw it in the bricks because the peckers are just going to get to it so quickly. Uh, but I throw it on banks, um, nice working banks where you know, you're know targeting better quality fish. Um, so what you need, basically a 4.0, 5.0 or 6.0 depending on the size of the squid. Same mustard soys, all right? 0.7 hook line. If you're concerned of some toothy fish around, then you can add a short 40 pound bite, I would make it that short, just the size of the squid, uh, so you don't affect too much of movement. Uh, but I fish with it straight nylon, eh? Um, I don't want to target fish with teeth with it. Uh, yeah. And then again, I've got my little piece of 180 pound leader off cuts that I, that I keep tied to a split ring, that's to clip it and hook it if I need to, throw it very far. Uh, and that's the type of, basically the hook smooth I'm gonna use about 35, 40 centimeters. Not too long. Um, we're basically targeting fish that feed in the bottom. If you are going to fish for a duckbill uh, with a squid, then uh, it's going to be a bigger bait and obviously put some foam if you want to. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've caught duckbills as well without foam because they, they often feed in the bottom as well. Um, I've got some foam that's cut in a fish shape. So you buy this from Kingfisher. Uh, I love this foam because it's the perfect size and perfect shape for me. I don't have to shape anything. And it's, uh, I've got toothpicks. So the toothpicks are to keep the squid nice and straight. And the, 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 the presentation of the bait is much better if you use some toothpicks. And also it holds the bait on, all right? So the bait doesn't slide off. So I'm just going to measure up quickly how big the toothpicks need to be. Okay, they're perfect size. What I do is I cut off the edges. Right, then I'm gonna cotton that on. Right, so with that piece of dacron hanging in the bottom, sorry, braid, I'm gonna just cotton that on. It's a bit tricky when you don't have a sinker attached, but you want to cotton it on at the back, back of the hook. All right. So make sure you cotton that on nice and tight, guys. Um, I tend to do a lot more wraps. Just wanna cut this toothpick a little bit shorter. I tend to do a lot more wraps on either side of the hook eye, so that basically holds it in place. I, I often use this in the reef as well when I'm not fishing with bait holder hooks. If I'm throwing uh, red eye bait or red eye and chaka, it just keeps my bait straight, casts better, and uh, doesn't cover the hook in any way. The bait doesn't flop around and doesn't uh, go down my line. So I fish with these very often. So that's tied in nice, secure. So the, the foam is not actually to give it float. The foam is actually there to give the bait some body. Um, and this is not really going to float the bait that much. If we, you know, if you try floating a bait in a pool, I'll just cut that a bit shorter. And you realize quickly that you can put in big amounts of foam, but your bait actually doesn't really move off the floor that far. But, so it's still close enough. You can do it without foam. I just like to use the piece of foam because it just makes the bait look much better and gives it more body. Right, also fishing for grey sharks, perfect bait, uh, bite trace, 
same method I just put two of these foams so I double it up so there's a bigger piece of foam and it floats a little bit more obviously along a trace and then that'll lift your your bait up in the feeding zone where the gray sharks feed gray sharks hammers they are they often like a lot of flotation uh, and they like the bait to be a little bit higher off the floor all right so that's my base done so it's toothpick and the foam at the back all right hook still nice and proud and I've got my clipping mechanism there it doesn't affect I can cast as hard as I want doesn't affect how my bait's gonna look it's not gonna pull down anyway all right because remember this is pulling against the the eye of the hook all right cool so now we've uh, down to the business so this is the base squid I cut these off because they cause problems when you throw so we cut that off and then you've got a spine here so you cut on that spine very lightly guys remember these are very fragile baits so you want to try not to damage them you got to work very carefully with them so open it up all right and that's the juicy bits that the fish actually like and then I take off that spine all right you can uh, leave the skin on I sometimes leave it on but for this presentation we're gonna throw it away all right so you're left with that guys you're basically left with your head with the gut then you're left with the with the body of the squid all right so the first thing I do is take my knife I just lightly press down if you look in the middle here there is a beak all right I just lightly press down and I push my bait knife in there and I pull that beak out so basically what that does is it relaxes the tentacles okay so that's done and even with that done what happens is when you throw this in the water it starts to curl out the tentacles so what you do is you take the back end of your knife and you lightly tap this so give it a light tap we're probably gonna have to tap it again when we're done but a very very light tap so that they stay limp but you want it to be limp all right and then the next thing i do is this is the mouth of the squid okay i'm gonna chop that out because that just creates a bit of an issue when you're baiting up so i chop that out okay now you're gonna go in from this is the top of the squid that's under you're gonna go in above both eyes right there all right above both eyes and you're gonna place that down so basically you're tying your head on first and then you're gonna put the balance over right so that's what this looks like right now before I've put cotton okay so now I'm gonna cotton this on there is a way to cotton it let me show you okay so I'm gonna do the just get this line out of the way all right guys don't forget the juicy bits try and keep them intact okay you're gonna cotton going down first okay you're gonna cotton coming up and then you're gonna crisscross against the eyes right there and you're gonna crisscross there so what you start to see is you start to see the eyes bulging right and you start to see the tentacles flaring and what I do is I go one way around, okay? Here we go, bulge. Okay, that's it. So that part of the bait's done. Okay? So we left with that. Now you've got this juicy butt here. So what I do is, you can take a knife and tap it. Okay, I've got a stainless steel chocker hammer that I lightly tap, very lightly tap, guys. Just to soften it up very lightly. Don't mush it up. The light tap. I cut off the top. The squid there. Obviously looks a little bit untidy. I'm going to trim that edge. I'm going to trim that edge, right? So I'm left with a piece of meat. 
that's pretty much like a ring okay it's like a superman shape there you go okay so what i do is i place this over right you see that it is gonna overlap if you want to you can trim it smaller and not let it overlap if you want to i don't do that i let it overlap it's fine Okay, it's there in place now and then you're gonna lightly tie it just to hold the shape just to hold that there and then you're gonna tie on properly okay so I've got the top there and I'm gonna pull that around go it is a bit difficult but once you get the hang of it So it's taking its shape. Again, I started from top, going down. Okay, try not to tie any of the tentacles down. Okay, so I'm going to go around the eyes again. Just holding that body of the squid down. go so you, remember I told you earlier that the tentacles are going to open up a little bit so what I do then is I just take my knife and I knock them a little bit there we go so guys there's your base squid slash baby squid bait you want to you can just trim trim that little excess piece of squid around the bottom there so the eyes are visible and that's your squid bait so perfectly looking baby squid slash base squid all right um guys i've caught probably most of the species you can think of with this bait what I also do, and a lot of guys don't do this, I don't know why, maybe they're not aware of it, but what happens is when you cast this and the impact of this hits, hits the water, this eye goes black because there's a fluid in this eye that's black. So what I do is I take another hook, sharp hook, and I just pop it. You'll see that black fluid comes out. There we go. And see there, you can see this one's already getting black. I just poke it, pop it, and it goes clear again. All right, so this eye is going to stay perfect as it is. All right, absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah, guys, and if I want to, I can clip it. There's my clipping mechanism there. Not going to be in the way of anything nice and soft. Perfect, perfect, perfect baby squid bait.